Have you ever wondered how tech giants like Google or Netflix make their microservices communicate blazingly fast? The secret lies in powerful technology called gRPC. In this video, we will break down gRPC from the ground up, what it is, how it works, and where it fits into modern backend systems. What is gRPC? gRPC stands for Google Remote Procedure Call. It's an open source framework that lets services call methods on other services as if they were local functions, even though they might be running on different servers. It's built on HTTP2 and uses protocol buffers, a binary format that's much smaller and faster than JSON. So what makes gRPC so fast and efficient? The secret is in something called protocol buffers or protobuf. It's a super efficient way to structure and transmit data between services. Protocol buffers are a language and platform neutral method for serializing structured data in a compact and efficient format. gRPC employs protocol buffer as its default method for data encoding and network transmission. Protocol buffers use strongly typed definitions with the data structure specified in a dot proto file. Now that you know what is gRPC and why it's so powerful, let's break down what really happens under the hood when a gRPC call is made. It all starts with a dot proto file where the service methods and data types are defined. Next, gRPC generates client and server code called stubs in your local language of choice like Java, Python, or Go. Let's explore how gRPC handle a client-server communication step by step. It begins with the client application preparing a request for a remote function call. The client stub then serializes the data using protocol buffers, a compact and efficient binary format. gRPC forwards the encoded data through the runtime and transmits it over HTTP2. On the server side, gRPC receives the request at the runtime layer. The server stub deserializes the binary data into a usable format using protobuf. The server application processes the request and prepares the response. Once ready, the server application hands the response to the server stub. The server stub serializes the response using protocol buffers again. gRPC transmits the encoded response back to the client over HTTP2. The client runtime receives the incoming response messages. The client stub deserializes the binary data into structured information. Finally, the response is delivered to the client application for use. This full round trip from client to server and back is handled seamlessly by gRPC using protocol buffers over HTTP2 under the hood. One of the powerful features of gRPC is that it's not just limited to traditional request response. gRPC supports different types of calls like unary, server streaming, client streaming, and bidirectional streaming, giving you flexibility depending on your use case. Unary RPC, just like a regular function call, the client sends one request and get one response. Server streaming RPC, the client sends one request and server responds with a stream of messages. Client streaming RPC. Here the client sends a stream of requests and the server reply with single response. Bidirectional streaming RPC. In bidirectional streaming RPC, both the client and server can send and receive stream of messages simultaneously. This flexibility makes gRPC a great fit for everything from real-time chat apps to large-scale data pipelines. Where is gRPC used? Let's take a look at where gRPC signs in real world. First, microservices. gRPC is perfect for internal service communication. It's fast, type safe, and scalable. Next, low latency systems. Think stock trading platforms, multiplayer games, or real time messaging apps where every millisecond counts. Streaming APIs like live chat, video conferencing, or IoT telemetry work great with gRPC's built-in support for streaming. Cloud-native platforms like Kubernetes or service meshes uses gRPC under the hood to manage and route traffic efficiently. 
Finally, IoT and Edge devices benefit from gRPC's compact binary format and efficient communication model. But gRPC is not perfect. Here are some of its limitations you should know. First, limited browser support. GRPC does not work directly in browser without using GRPC web, which has some trade-offs. Second, Protobuf is not human readable. Unlike JSON, you can't just open it in a text editor and understand what's going on. Third, there's a steeper learning curve. You will need to learn Protobuf syntax, IDLs and code generation. Lastly, GRPC is not the best choice in REST-heavy ecosystems, especially if you are exposing public APIs meant to be consumed by a wide variety of clients. To sum it all up, here's why developers love GRPC. It's fast and lightweight, using HTTP2 under the hood. It's perfect for inter-service communication in a microservice setup. It supports all major programming languages which means it's great for polyglot teams. And finally, it shines in streaming and high performance systems. In the next video, we will get hands on and show you how to build your first gRPC service, set up bidirectional streaming and use code generation to simplify client server integration. Got a gRPC use case in mind? Drop it in the comments. If this video help you out, give it a like and make sure you to subscribe for more bite-sized tech tutorials thank you for watching